Uh, Brian said, what do you think about the uh, Caitlin Clark hip check situation? The Caitlin Clark hip check situation, this is something else that I'll probably go into more detail on um, again at a later date. Um, I wanted to actually dedicate an entire episode to what's been going on with the WNBA and also what happened with Monica McNutt. It's been hard to work this into my schedule. But um, honestly, I think it was overblown. Um, I I get the fact that it was a non-basketball play. And so that seems to be the line of demarcation for a lot of people. Whenever people say, well, the WNBA has always been physical. And they're like, oh, well, they're normally physical during the course of gameplay. You know, on, in this particular situation, the, the ball hadn't even been inbounded. Okay, I'll give you that. But, um, and Brian, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, but I actually wrote like a pretty long post um, about my thoughts on the situation and also how it's been covered. Um, I feel like in the grand scheme of things, it was a relatively minor moment that could have remained as a minor moment had people not been so quick to Kate for, for Caitlin Clark. Um, it was a play where nobody was hurt. Was it rude? Yes. Was it uncalled for? Yes. Should it, should it have been a, a flagrant foul? foul? Yes. Um, people calling for the suspension of Kennedy Carter, I think is uncalled for. Um, I was watching that game that game between the Chicago Sky and the Indiana Fever. And it was actually a really close game. It was an exciting game. It came down to the last possession. And there are so many storylines that can be discussed related to that game. There are so many exciting things that happened during that game that can be discussed in relation to that game. And I was just like, why are y'all focusing so much on this one play? Like, I get it. It was rude. It was messed up. But is it really something that we need to talk about for like two days? Not when so many other great things were happening on the court. And by great, I don't even necessarily mean good. I just mean like significant. There were so many other things, other significant things that happened, not only in that particular game, but also within the WNBA over the course of that weekend. You know what I'm saying? So like the fact that they decided to lock in on that one particular moment and hone in on it and not let it go. It was just really weird energy for me. Um, And one of the things that I mentioned in the post, as a matter of fact, I'll just pull up the post and read it. And that might kind of get me to where I want to be in terms of other things that I want to say about this particular situation. So I made the post three days ago, if you want to go back and look at it. But I said, the current mainstream coverage of of the WNBA is proof that more is not always better. This morning on Unsportsmanlike, that's a show on ESPN, Evan Cohen brought up the uh, brought up the question of what the media can and should do now with it being that they can't go back in time and pay more attention to all the great WNBA stories that were missed. So basically, they were talking about how um, Caitlin Clark was getting a lot more attention than other players who had also accomplished great things in the league. Um, and she hasn't really done anything yet. And so... Evan Cohen asked a question, which which is a good question. He's like, okay, well, we can't go back and do anything about that. So what should we do? What should we do now? Like, we didn't pay enough attention to those stories. Should we just not pay attention to good stories now? Um, and so I, I continued. I said, crazy thing is, there's no need to go back. Start doing better now. So many stories are still being missed because new eyes on the WNBA are focused on the wrong things. We spent days discussing Kennedy Carter and Caitlin Clark two players from two teams with losing records, while the Connecticut Sun's undefeated undefeated season hasn't been mentioned on anyone's A block. And what about Asia Wilson averaging a double-double so far this season, hopefully on her way to being named league MVP? Because a lot of people felt like she was snubbed last year. Brianna Stewart got it last year. And people were like, Asia Wilson deserved that. She didn't get it. And it kind of feels like, you know, she's, she's taking that personally a little bit this season, you know? And then I said, um, how about what college athletes can learn from how Angel Reese turned NIL deals into professional revenue streams and potentially a renaissance for Reebok women sneakers? So before Angel Reese got into the league, um, no, no women in the WNBA were wearing Reebok. Like she's the first woman to go into the WNBA um, and be repping the Reebok brand. So that's kind of a big deal in itself. Even the Sky Fever game itself, I watched it. It was exciting. A riveting nail biter that came down to the last possession and gave the Fever their second win of the season, despite them coming in as major underdogs. 
It was a continuation of the story from the NCAA Women's Tournament of 2023 when Clark and Reese faced each other in the title game. Two high-profile competitors who instantly captured fan bases whose demographics are about as close to natural rivals as the modern human experience will allow. But by all means, let's focus on two seconds of aggression where no one was hurt unless you count a lot of poorly expressed feelings of new WNBA enthusiasts. And while focusing on that moment, they not only refused to acknowledge, but actively dismissed the voices and perspective of the women who played the game and have covered it for years, all for the sake of boiling down a complex coalescence of events, circumstances, and catalysts that brought us to this point into a reduction of narratives about jealousy and envy. It's as though the actual game means less to them than the fact that they finally have video evidence to support this idea. They're so desperate to believe that they repeatedly disparage and insult the very women they claim their coverage is helping. Here's an idea. Instead of just saying that Ka that attention on Caitlin Clark will improve coverage of all teams and players, how about you just improve your coverage of all teams and players? But I suppose baseless claims, pointed fingers, and shirked responsibilities are the best compliments of hurt feelings, clickbait narratives, and perpetuated stereotypes. It would be irresponsible of me to expect anything else. Almost as irresponsible as the half-baked journalism that's capitalizing off the rise in popularity of women's sports. Anyway, I gotta finish packing. And if you read this far, just know I appreciate you and can't wait to dive into this even more. So... In the section where I talked about them being dismissive of women who have played the game, I was talking not only about Monica McNutt, but other women who were trying to add some nuance and context to this situation by pointing out the fact that one, Kennedy Carter has never been exactly the, the poster child of good sportswomanship. And two, Caitlin Clark had elbowed her pretty hard before she went and pushed her, you know? And so... There were multiple people. The first people who come to mind um, are Tarika um, and Monica. Um, and they both made the point that like, hey, we're not saying this is okay. We're not saying that this is something that should be allowed. But what we're saying is that we don't think this is personal against Caitlin Clark. We think anybody who elbows Kennedy Carter like that should expect her to re retaliate in some way, even if it is a dirty play. So let's focus less on, okay, this is something against Caitlin Clark and just look at what exactly happened here, which means we also have to look at the player who committed this action and think about, okay, is this actually Caitlin Clark being picked on? Is this something that only happens to her or did she happen to pick the wrong one that day? And that's what these women were saying. Like, okay, she so just picked the wrong one that day. And maybe what Kennedy Carter did was messed up, but that's what she does. Like, don't make this about Caitlin Clark. It's not about Caitlin Clark, you know? Um, and what upset me about the responses to that was the fact that there were so many people who came behind those women and didn't even take into consideration their perspective on Kennedy Carter being elbowed. Didn't even bring it up. As a matter of fact, I want to say it was um, Shannon Sharp because he was on the episode with Monica McNutt and Stephen A. Smith. And he said something about how the Indiana Fever teammates uh, should have retaliated on behalf of Caitlin Clark. Like they should have had her back. They shouldn't let anything like that stand because if you do something like that to a teammate, everybody needs to take responsibility in handling it. And I'm like, okay, so you're saying the proper course of action for Caitlin Clark being pushed would be for the entire team to retaliate. So wouldn't that mean that if Kennedy Carter was retaliating in response to being elbowed, that she also did the right thing? In which case, why are we even discussing this? Because based on your logic, when someone lays a dirty hit on you or someone's too physical with you, there's supposed to be retaliation, which is exactly what Kennedy Carter did. So why are we upset, you know? Um, so it was just really disappointing to see so many people, especially so many men who are like, we're covering women's sports. So we're the heroes. Look at us doing great things for women's sports. And it's like, but everything that you're saying is making all the women in the WNBA sound and look bad, except for one. So if that's your idea of coverage that's supposed to help the sport, you can keep it. Anyway, I don't even know if I'm addressing the right thing anymore. <laughs> Let me look at more of your comments. Um, 
Uh, Brian said, yeah, you didn't like the men on ESPN talking about it. ESPN, TNT, NBA TV, uh, none of them. And it's not so much that I don't like the men on ESPN talking about it. It's that I don't like the way that they're talking about it. Um, Because if you listen to what they're saying, they're essentially like, oh, Caitlin Clark is being picked on because all the other women in the WNBA are jealous. Um, And it's that's just a really if they are being intentionally rude or if they're being tone deaf and by tone deaf what I mean is there is a certain segment of new WNBA fans who is using this moment with Caitlin Clark as an excuse and as a reason to say some really messed up things about black women under the guise of fandom so basically them being Caitlin Clark fans gives them clearance to say all this messed up stuff that a lot of us can recognize as misogynoir and racism, but there are other people who should be calling it out who just don't seem to be seeing it at all. And so when you have men like Stephen A. Smith and like Shannon Sharp go on national television and say what they said, say what they said and, and treat Monica McNutt how they did, it's like they're adding fuel to that fire. And so a lot of us are just like, yo, y'all are saying y'all are trying to help, but you're really not helping. Like, shut the fuck up like you're you're not making these women look good you're not making the sport look good you are focusing on things that actually make these women look bad chill the fuck out you know um Eastside Herald said Angel Reese is growing on me she's starting to look fine um Angel Reese has been fine I don't know where you've been uh Brian continues what about Stephen A. Smith saying he made the WNBA oh lord uh, they were not talking about the WNBA th- three years ago per Monica, and Monica was correct. Um, as he was talking bullshit. Uh, yeah, I addressed that in another post, and in a nutshell, I basically said, Monica McNutt said that Stephen A. Smith, she didn't even say ESPN, she didn't say first tape. She, she actually specifically said, I'm talking about you and your platform, Stephen A. Um, she said he wasn't talking about the WNBA like this three years ago, and he wasn't. And honestly, if you listen to his soliloquy that he did on his podcast, he actually proves her right because he didn't prove that he actually did. All he did was say a bunch of stuff about why he didn't. He's like, oh, well, you know, the WNBA wasn't as popular. These topics weren't percolating back then. Okay, so you have your reasons for why you didn't. The fact of the matter still stands you didn't. And that's what she was saying. So she was right. So it really pissed me off that he said that she lied because I'm like, you, you, you're saying that she lied, but then you go on to support everything that she said. I mean, just because you have a reason for doing what you did doesn't mean you didn't do what you did. So, I mean, you know, if you feel a way about it, if it makes you feel self-conscious, just do better. But don't try to disparage this woman for calling out something that we all saw. Um, I thought that was a real Bush League move on the part of Stephen A. Smith. And and if I'm being honest, he's He's made a lot of questionable moves recently where it just seems like there's a lot of things that he's taken personally. um, And a lot of the things that he says seem to be in response to criticism or him taking out his feelings on people who or groups who don't necessarily deserve it. Um, It's just really weird energy coming from Stephen A for about the past year or so. (laughs) 